The first time I played Red Dead Redemption 2, I almost gave up. I kind of hated it. I found the game's obsession with realism to be quite frustrating, how you had to brush your horse and skin and carry animals individually and shave and cut your hair. It all got very irritating after a couple of hours. But the main reason I was about to quit was Arthur Morgan. I didn't like him. I didn't like him at all. Why'd it have to come to this, huh? Yo, you're gonna sleep with your chest open if you ain't careful, boy. Please, money, valuables. Don't do that. Arthur Morgan is a bad man. He does bad things, and he doesn't feel particularly bad about doing them. He's a hard protagonist to root for, which is an especially bad problem for a video game, because in a game the story can only progress if you and the main character are on the same page. With John Marston back in the first game, that was easy. John wanted to see his family again. I wanted John to see his family again. We were on the same page. But Arthur? What does he even want? Howdy, partner. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of my favourite games of the last decade, but it took me a long time to get there. I like being a hero, I like helping people, and Red Dead 2 is not that. At least not at first. I couldn't appreciate what Red Dead 2 was until I had finished it. The game really is truly about redemption, but it understands that in order for redemption to be meaningful, you have to see the bad as well as the good. The game is the long, long journey of Arthur Morgan learning to become a better man, and the crux of that journey, the turning point in the story, is a single scene. One musical scene, you could say. But we can't just jump in, we need context, so here's your context. Red Dead Redemption 2 is about the fall of the Vanderlind gang, a gang of thieves, killers, and primarily bank robbers who nonetheless have a family-like dynamic led by the titular Dutch Vanderlind, who, for Arthur especially, is a father figure, which is bad for Arthur because Dutch is in the middle of a downward spiral. After feeding the local mafia boss to the crocodiles, he's decided it would be a good idea, while on the run from the law and a millionaire industrialist, to rob the biggest bank in the state. And it goes about as well as you'd expect. Two gang members are killed, John Marston is arrested, and the rest of the boys escape on a ship out to sea, for what's honestly the weakest part of the entire game where they end up in Cuba and fight in a totally unrelated civil war, in a really outdated white saviour kind of way, like maybe Rockstar, you could have saved several hours of game time and the marriages of a few of your employees if you just cut Warma entirely, sorry I'm getting off topic. The most important thing that happens here is this. What? What do you do? Jesus! Easy, Dutch! What was that? Horrible old crone. But you killed her. She was gonna betray us, Arthur. Couldn't you tell? No. Well, I got some Spanish. She was. You keep killing folk, Dutch. I am just trying to make sure that some of us survive, Arthur. It's a pivotal moment in their relationship, it's the first time Arthur has seen Dutch with none of his bravado, none of his class, when he sees him for what he really is, an egotistical narcissist who values no one's life but his own. Things are too hectic to focus on it right now, but when they finally get back to America after who knows how long away, they decide to ride alone to avoid drawing suspicion. It's a long ride to the old hideout, almost the length of the map, and it's a dark and rainy night, but you've got one saving grace. A song begins to play. The song is Unshaken by D'Angelo, and it couldn't be more perfect for the game if it was written for exactly this moment. Which it actually was, go figure. The game doesn't have an inner monologue for Arthur, but this may as well be it. The song conveys everything about what's going through his head right to this moment. It's an incredibly yeah. downbeat song, and D'Angelo's deep bassy voice somehow brings it even lower. It's a song about a man rethinking his entire life as his world comes crashing around him, but it's got a bit of hope in there too. May I stand unshaken amidst a crashing world. The song is a blend of sadness and of new resolve. Sad because the old ways and the old world are gone, but Arthur will be unshaken. He will emerge a better man, doing the right thing. Each of the verses are guilt-based. Did I hear thunder? Did I hear you break? Arthur should have seen the writing on the wall before now. Should have seen that Dutch was never the man he pretended to be. He was always dragging them all down to his level, and that was obvious from the outside looking in. The Pinkertons are assholes, but they see them all for the men they are, and not the men they pretend to be. The morning light. When it comes to me, I was there. 
but I could not see. But then, the chorus, it's the resolve. What's happened has happened, you can't change the past, but the future is still yours to shape, if you remain unshaken. It represents not only this moment in Arthur's life, but the rest of his life as well. He can change, he can strive to be better, he will strive to be better for the rest of his days. Which, unfortunately, will be tragically short. That's the third layer of this song, it's not just the literal world that's crashing down, it's the personal one. It's Arthur himself. Arthur's been coughing more and more as the game goes on. It's subtle at first, but by this point it's clear that something is going on. People in fiction don't just cough, no. Arthur has tuberculosis, and it's terminal. He's got weeks, if that, to turn his entire life around, and do a lifetime of pain and suffering. It seems like an impossible task, but damn it, he's going to try. He's going to remain unshaken, even in the face of death. That chorus is actually an adaptation of a proverb by a guy called Paramahansa Yogananda, who, according to my research on Wikipedia to make me sound smarter, was the guy who brought Indian spirituality and meditation to America. You must stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. It's a suggestion of inner peace and of harmony. And you know, a bunch of god stuff that I don't really jive with, but whatever, that's the relevant part to Red Dead 2. That's not the chorus, though. The chorus is, may I? It's unsure, a representation of the confusion in Arthur. He's lived his whole life following the teachings of Dutch, to learn that he's been wrong all this time. It's hard, and it's confusing, and maybe, just maybe, it says something about the game itself. In case I neglected to mention, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a video game, as debatable as that may be to some, and as I've said in previous videos, choice is a key aspect of video games. In Red Dead 2, the most pivotal choice the game gives you is, will you redeem Arthur Morgan? Because you don't have to. May I stand unshaken? Who is the song? Who is Arthur asking? Parmahansa Yogananda would probably tell you that it is God, but I think it's more basic than that. He's asking the player. He's asking you. The final chapter of the game is when it truly becomes a game of redemption, with Arthur doing everything in his power with his limited time he has left to make sure something gets better, helping John and his family escape, saving the wife of the man who gave him TB in the first place despite the fact that she hates his guts and would rather never see him again. It's tough. Really tough, but it's beautiful as well. A man who many hours ago I hated for the violence he did to that man, that I second-handedly did with him, realising his mistakes, paying the price, and doing something to fix it anyway. Standing unshaken. The song has one more reprise in the game, and I'll give you three guesses where it is. Arthur takes his last breath, overlooking a new dawn. He stood unshaken, faced down the monsters he used to love, saved his brother, and now he can rest. And then Kyle, staying up far too late at night, cries like a small baby for like 15 minutes. But it doesn't have to end this way. You can choose the other ending, where you have a rubbish fight in the mud with Micah. And that's weird, right? Why does the game even offer an option that isn't the obvious, narratively satisfying one? I mean, the game's called Redemption. Why is there an ending without the redemptive part? It's because the option makes the better path more meaningful. Arthur can or cannot be redeemed. He has to put in that work. And you you along with him. You have to deliberately do the right thing, over and over again, even when it's easier or more profitable not to. Because that's what true redemption means. It doesn't just mean dying heroically, it means working to undo your mistakes and make the world a better place. If you don't do that, you're corrupting the story, changing it from the intended narrative path. And of course, that's represented in a reprise of the song again. When you choose to forsake John Marston, choose revenge instead, you once again hear the same song. But it's wrong. I mean, take a listen. Get it, get me, you bastards! What is 
is going on here? We've got all these wibbly hip hop beats and this verse about being a powerful badass. It's wrong. It's all wrong. The modern world is bleeding into the game as it breaks away from the intended path, and it's reflected in the changing tone and changing attitude of the song. Arthur isn't asking, he's telling, but he's wrong. He's been guided down the wrong path. Gosh, it kind of feels like I'm saying if you picked this ending you were playing the game wrong. There are other music moments in Red Dead 2, and they're mostly great, especially Arthur's Last Ride, but none of them have the narrative power of Unshaken. It's the embodiment of Arthur's arc, emphasised by its reprisal at his death. It's just, to me, the perfect example of game music not just being good, not just being appropriate, but being used in a way that's actually part of the story, and incorporating the interactivity of video games. I'm in awe of it. It stands Unshaken. Thank you very much for watching, and a very special thank you to my singular patron, Joe LD. Still just you up there, buddy, but we're working on it. If you'd like to join Joe, you can find the link in the description below, and while you're down there, why not like, comment, and subscribe as well, eh? If you're on the one musical scene train through the playlist, then I wish you well on your journey. I'm sure there's plenty of great videos below me. Or if you want to get off and have a look around, why not enjoy this video about Mass Effect, eh? Good day, partner.